Hi, this is Angela Russell from thecouponproject.com and I want to welcome you to tonight's live webcast. We're going to be talking about overcoming challenges that we're seeing with couponing. So before we get um, started, I just want to do a couple uh, quick announcements. First of all, most important, <laughs> during my testing tonight to make sure that everything was a go for tonight's webcast, my comp computer completely shut down and I had to reboot. So I'm hoping that I can make through this webcast without it all of a sudden going black. So if it does, I'm going to probably just do the webcast another day. But I'm hoping and got my fingers crossed that I can get through about 15-20 minutes um, without that happening. Tonight's webcast is being recorded so for any reason you miss it I will have the video up on my YouTube channel as well as my blog I hope about tomorrow. Second, I just want to welcome you for following me from Ustream tonight. I hope you'll check out my site, which is thecouponproject.com. My goal is to show you how to use coupons and sales best for a frugal living lifestyle, as well as pointing you to the deal specific to my area, which is the Western Washington portion of Pacific Northwest. With that, let's dive right in. Oh, one quick note, there is a chat box going on. So if you are following me on my site, go ahead, create a Ustream account, jump in. I am monitoring the chat for your questions and comments tonight. So let's jump right in. So one of the things I wanted to um, address with you all is the changes that we're seeing in the couponing environment. The truth is stuff isn't the same as it used to be years ago when we were finding lots of deals, we were using lots of coupons, we're noticing a lot of changes happening. And you may have seen some gripes about that, you may have seen some complaints and blame shifting. My goal with tonight is not to be negative and blame any particular thing or group or activity or whatever. My goal is to say, okay, let's just acknowledge the fact that changes have happened. These are challenges we have and what can we do to overcome them. So I, um, in my little brainstorm here, I came up with five specific challenges that I would like to address. And if you have others, feel free to go ahead, sound off in the, um, the chat box there. I am watching that. So the first thing I want to say before I jump into the challenges is the overarching theme tonight is adjusting expectations. Know that things aren't always going to be the same. So what was able to work for you a few years ago, you're probably just not going to be able to do that today. So being willing to adjust your expectations. You're going to hear me use that phrase or that concept in several different ways tonight. So let's jump in. Challenge number one, shelves are empty. Now if I hear one thing more often than not, this is the main complaint that I'm hearing from you. That maybe competition for deals is intensified or maybe there's a couple people in your particular area that are being really aggressive and they're clearing off the shelves. This can be really frustrating. If you've driven across town or you've clipped all your coupons, you're going to get just the few items you need for your family and boom, shelves are empty. And I suppose as couponers we expect this to happen from time to time but when it becomes a repeated pattern it can be really discouraging and you can want to throw your hands up and give up so here are my possible solutions for this so I'm gonna, for each of these challenges I'm gonna rattle off a few different ideas you need to figure out which one makes best sense for you okay so my first idea is shop at different stores this one may be the simplest solution in your case. I'm finding that a lot of times stock is most competitive at drug stores. These are not warehouses. These are small stores. They're intended to be more convenient stores. They don't get stock in multiple times per week. They may restock just once a week and not with a lot of quantity. So maybe you decide, maybe for now, that we're going to try to shop at grocery stores instead of drug stores. Or if you've been shopping at grocery stores, maybe try shopping at a bigger grocery store. Winko is a great example. They are almost like a warehouse. You can almost always find what you need in stock. Another thought would be try shopping at a same store within that chain but a different location. So if you always shop at the same Safeway, maybe if there's a really hot deal you want to take advantage of, try shopping at another Safeway maybe across town. Now this isn't always feasible all the time, but let's say if there's a deal that really matters to you that you really want to take advantage of, maybe that extra 10 minutes would be worth your time. You might also find that even within a chain of stores, the individual stores, the managers and the way they stock the stores may be different and you might have greater success by doing that. 
Another idea for um, empty shelves, learn your store stocking schedule or try altering when it is that you shop. One thing that's helped for me, if I find that I keep running into empty shelves, is simply asking, when when are you getting a stock in next? Um, when can I expect to take advantage of this deal? Here's a deal I really want. When should I, when do you recommend that I come in? Begin to open these conversations with your store, which leads me to my next point of begin to build a relationship with your store manager. One of the biggest successes I've had in this area, I'm thinking of one store in particular where I've really reached out to a store manager and they actually have begun to follow my blog and sometimes I'll even send them, hey, guess what guys, you might want to keep stock on Ken's dressing, there's going to be a hot sale this week. Letting them know that, hey, these sales are coming, people are going to be wanting to take advantage of them. And a lot of times the manager has been appreciative or receptive and then I go to the store and not on the first day of the sale and well, the, the shelves are full, there, there's plenty of stock. This Again, this tactic doesn't always work, not everyone is going to be sympathetic to what you're trying to do, but more times than not, if you begin to build those relationships and have those conversations, you're going to find that the stores do want to please you, they do want to meet your needs. So see if they're willing to work with you. Okay, and this is my last solution for the empty shelves scenario. Avoid shopping those hot deals entirely. Now, maybe this sounds like I am being negative, but, but hear me out. If you keep running into a situation with a store where every time there's a hot deal, this, the, the store is empty. Maybe you have tried having those conversations. Maybe, maybe you're, you've just run into the situation more times than you can handle. This is my solution. Take your coupons and go to another store. Maybe I personally, I'd rather go to a store where I'm going to pay 50 cents for an item and know that the, the stock is going to be there versus going to a smaller store where it's a money maker if I'm lucky enough to get the item. It's not a money maker if the shelf is empty. Remember that. So, and remember what your goal is, is getting those items that your family needs. So you're trying to stock up on those things. So go where you can actually take advantage of those um, those um, sales. Now you might feel like, why didn't I mention rain checks? Okay, well, so we all know that rain checks are there. So of course that's an always an option, but know that the way that sometimes the deals are structured and with the tighter deadlines we're seeing on coupons, rain checks aren't always the simplest solution that they're presented to be. Like, oh, just get a rain check. It's not always as simple as that. So for instance, there was a mix and match sale I wanted to take advantage of last week and they were out of stock. So when I asked for the rain check, I explained, hey, I'm expecting a Catalina on this deal. So if I get the rain check, can you make sure to work that into your rain check? And because it's a store I have a friendly relationship with, they were able to oblige. So make sure if you are looking to get a rain check that they're able to account those other special things that you're hoping, the special discounts and sales you're hoping to get, um, you know, by going to get that deal are included in the rain check. Okay, so those are some of my ideas for what to do about empty shelves. Let's move on to challenge number two. Coupon policies have changed. These are hard to stay up on because it seems like every few months things change. So here are my thoughts on what to do about store coupon policies evolving and changing so rapidly. The first thing is choose to see the positive. Just because things are changing doesn't always mean it's a negative thing. I can think of a couple examples. For instance, Albertsons in December expanded their coupon policy to now allow manufacturer coupons to produce overage. This was a positive change. So if you are aware of it, now there's an additional advantage or additional way you can start saving money with coupons at Albertsons. Fred Meyer and I know Safeway as well, they have expanded their coupon policies to accept manufacturer Catalina coupons with other store logos on them. So not all changes are bad and it, it does pay to stay on top of what those changes are. I personally think that some of the changes have increased the the competition across stores. I think stores are more aware that they have a growing consumer base that's interested in using coupons and they're trying to find ways to attract that customer base while still remaining profitable. So sometimes you will see that these changes are positive and enticing to get you into their stores. So 
Another thought on coupon policies changing, again, going back to my theme tonight, adjust your expectations and specifically on stockpiling. So with coupon policies may now come new limits of how many times you can do a deal, a given deal at a store. So this may mean that your approach to stockpiling is more gradual. It may not mean that you can get the 20 cans that you used to. It may mean maybe you get six and maybe you stay more vigilant and more on top of your stockpile. Uh, maybe it means if a deal really matters to you that you bring a spouse or a child or you make an extra trip later in the week. So adjust your expectations on stockpiling. Also, remember that policies may well protect the interest of all the shoppers. So while limitations may be a drag to you, the upside of that is sometimes those policies have been put in place to uh, prevent the very issue which I explained before this one, which was the empty shelf syndrome. So by limiting a stock or limiting how many a particular customer can get, then the deal becomes available to more shoppers. So this can be a positive thing as well. Finally, I want to say when it comes to coupon policies changing and maybe when they've come to change for the negative, remember that coupon policies are not set in stone. These are things that are changed. I've actually recommended coupon policy, specific coupon policy changes to stores that were implemented. And that was just me saying something and then boom, it got changed. Um, be vocal. Feel free to be vocal, whether it's on a store's Facebook page or whether it's contacting the store manager or going through their email. Do be professional. Do be do be courteous, but don't be afraid to share that feedback with your stores directly. Okay, so challenge three is another one that I sometimes hear, and it's one that if we're just being honest, it's it's happening, okay? And that's the fact that some coupons and or deals are going away. Um, a prime example of this, when I started couponing several years ago, I always found diaper coupons. It seemed like every single week there were diaper coupons and we found printable coupons. Like, hello, does everybody remember like all the Huggies printable coupons that used to be on coupons.com every other week? I don't remember the last time. It's been a while since I saw those coupons. And then the Huggies coupons, they used to be in all the papers and then I noticed they started dropping off my local paper. Um, thankfully, my kids are out of diapers now, so that's not as much of a concern, but that's just one example of how a deal that you can get really comfortable with always being there, and then the game suddenly changes and you realize, man, I've really grown reliant upon this one method of saving or this coupon coming out. I'm just reliant that it's going to be there and then it's not there. So what, what can you do when you're in a situation like this, when a deal s suddenly falls away? My first thought for a solution is find new methods of saving on the same item. Uh, become brand disloyal. Okay, so the Huggies coupons started dropping off. Maybe this is a good time to start exploring Loves, or maybe it's a good time to look at Tugaboo's, the Rite Aid brand, or Kroger Comforts, the Kroger in-store brand. Um, maybe it's time to look at online options for buying um, cloth diapers. Maybe it's time to um, look at buying in bulk or finding if there's a diaper service you can go in with friends or buying online through Amazon. So be willing to tackle the same the problem of I need this item at a low price um, and begin to look at all the different options that you may have available with or without coupons. Um, another thought too to remember um, a lot of stores you, you can earn rewards, gas points, so as you adjust your expectations on what a good price may be for an item, think of all the different ways that you may still be able to maximize on getting that best deal. Another thought is keep an eye on printables. While some insert coupons have go gone away or kind of fallen, I'm noticing like Facebook, for instance, has become a really great source of high value coupons. Sometimes too, you'll see um, certain coupons pop up on multiple printable sites. A good example of this are our Betty Crocker and Pillsbury coupons. So if you see them on coupons.com, a lot of times you'll find similar coupons for similar items also on smartsource.com, pillsbury.com, bettycrocker.com, boxtep educate or for educations.com. So so this is another way that you can begin to um, supplement your coupon stash if you're finding problems with
um, some of the coupons that you rely for in your inserts going away. Make sure to sign up on the mailing list of the brands that matter to you. Make sure to give them a call and ask if they have any coupons they can send you. So if there's coupons that you're really missing or needing, be aggressive and look for those opportunities to get to replace those coupons in other ways. This also ties into my point of don't become too loyal to any one method of saving. And a lot of times we don't realize that we've done this until the game changes. Um, a while ago, I wrote a post on, on Albertson's doublers it, because it seems like so many couponers have become so um, hung up on using Albertson's double coupons as the best way to save that they've missed other opportunities to save along the line. And the truth is, Albertson, that's their prerogative. Albertson's at any point could decide to pull the plug on that program. So I think it's really important that you, what I call the diversification of savings is kind of a fancy term, but the idea of being willing to explore other stores, being willing to explore other methods of saving. I know I go on and on and on about buying in the bulk bins at Winco, but seriously, when the oatmeal sales in January that I used to um, rely on started to fall away, I was okay because I discovered that I could buy oats in bulk in the Winco bins for about 60 cents a pound. Even better, the steel cut oats, for whatever reason, cost like 56 cents a pound. They're actually less money than the old fashioned or the quick cooking notes. So I actually, by exploring the option of bulk bins, I actually found an even better deal than ever. I discovered a new avenue of saving on oatmeal. So I've not been crying too bad about the lack of the oatmeal January sale. Um, again, to remember that flexibility is key and adjusting those expectations. So this may mean that I have to adjust the the prices that I'm willing to pay for things and we're we're seeing we're seeing this more and I'm going to talk about this a little bit more in my in my um, next point but do work to not become too loyal on one way of saving keep an open mind keep an open approach and I also want to just put a plug on the on this challenge of coupon deals going away Learn to do it yourself. Learn to make it from scratch. This isn't always feasible, um, but sometimes it's a really great alternative. I, going along with this, learn to do without or do with an alternative. Um, for instance, if cereal, we've seen the prices of cereal go up, the, the deals for cereal haven't been as plentiful as they used to be, so maybe this is the season to go and get that oatmeal in bulk at Winco. Or maybe it's a great opportunity to learn to cook some new things for breakfast, homemade omelets or pancakes or smoothies, um, great favorite um, around my house. So um, learn to change things up. Um, another example that I came up with tonight, if you haven't seen a fruit snack sale in a while, well maybe this is a good opportunity to learn how to dehydrate fruit. I did a post back in April about dehydrating fruit in your oven, which is ridiculously easy. Anybody can do it. Well, anybody with an oven, I suppose. So you find the dollar pineapples on sale at QC sliced thinly, that one pineapple could make a ton of dehydrated fruit. And it, you've probably saved a lot of money versus buying fruit snacks, even with sale and with coupons. So be open to trying new things. Become brand disloyal, but become specific product and food disloyal, too, I guess is what I'm saying, if you can. Be willing to explore new options or new, new solutions to the problem. Now I want to talk about the next challenge, challenge number four, which is prices are going up, even with coupons. Let's just be honest. They are. There's no getting around to it. Plus, let's not forget uh, food shrinkage, right? Which is where you think all of a sudden, oh my gosh, the price on diapers has gone down a little bit until you realize, whoa, no, there's like five less diapers per pack, right? Or a few years ago, there was like a um, problem with the orange crops one year. And so a lot of the orange juice companies, they dropped their like 64 ounce jugs down to 59 ounce. But funny how the next year when the orange shortage problem cleared up, the jugs were still at 59 ounces. So we have that problem too. So the truth is prices just have gone up. So in my mind, 
I've had to learn to adjust to that. I have learned to say, okay, I can't buy cereal at 50 cents a box anymore. Or if I, if I can, I'm definitely stocking up. But for me, I've learned to say, okay, maybe a dollar is a more realistic price for that. Um, maybe a dollar 25 is a more realistic price for me for pasta sauce and peanut butter is definitely one of those items that have gone up too. Where before I would used to say, wow, a dollar or less would be great. Now I'm kind of of the mind that like a dollar 50, maybe even $2, depending on the brand. Um, is a reasonable price to pay. So how can you deal with this? So besides adjusting your expectations, well, assess where your budget might need to change. Um, in our case, we've decided, you know, what's realistic for our family is just to up, up the budget. We're, we're able to do that. So let's just do it so we're not so stressed. Um, I mean, you don't need to like double it or whatever, but just so you can you can actually afford to eat without stressing out about looking for deals that just aren't there, right? Um, if you can't afford to adjust your food budget, then figure out where else in your budget you may need to. Um, or my other thought on this is find ways to adjust your menu. Again, maybe it's a matter of, okay, we always eat cereal and now cereal is expensive. Now maybe we don't eat cereal. Or another great thought I have for you is just try going meatless for a few meals a week. You would cut out a lot of um, dollars in your budget if you're willing to do that. If you're willing to do something with beans and rice, if you're willing to experiment um, with tofu or squash or um, other plant sources that are still filling and protein rich but aren't going to hurt your budget. The other side to that too is by um, choosing to go meatless a few meals a week. Now you can more readily afford the, the cuts of meat that um, are, are better quality and maybe a little bit more expensive. So I won't go on a big um, tangent about becoming vegetarian or anything, but I use it as an example to say, it's okay to say, hey, prices are going up, so what can we do in our menu plan to adjust? So maybe so we can begin from our menu plan to then adjust our, our grocery shopping list as well. Um, stockpiling still applies. So even though prices are going up, the same basic method of buying low to avoid paying full price later, that's still going to apply. Um, I don't think that changes at all. I do think, um, as I said earlier, that your expectation of how you stockpile may change. Stockpiling may become something that's done more gradually over time, cherry picking kind of, as I call it. So as you find those deals, you add them in, um, but maybe it's not as aggressive or doesn't look exactly like it did several years ago and that's and that's okay but I still think stockpiling buying ahead when you find those deals that's an important component of couponing and I don't think that goes away the last thought I have about what to do um, right about rising food prices um, explore new places for buying your food now maybe this sounds obvious like okay duh but I mean seriously scout out off the beaten path places I'm not just saying if you normally shop at an Albertsons shop at a Safeway that may be a value you might find some things by doing that but I mean really explore your options so I've talked a lot about the store grocery outlet and I really can't speak enough about them um, if you've not gone in there you really need to now they don't accept coupons that's not the model of store that they are but what they really offer is great discounts um, on a number of products and I think you if you've not been or maybe you've been a long time ago I think you'd be really delightfully surprised what you'd find and if you go on my site and click on the grocery outlet um, logo you'll see some examples of what I've recently found um, they're a great place to find things like quality cheeses meat I have found all sorts of organic and gluten-free products at a fraction of the price now you never know exactly what you're gonna find so if you find a deal you'll want to stock up um, but that's an example of of checking out someplace different um, to help offset your grocery cost. Um, another place that I've talked quite a bit about is Zacon Foods. And Zacon Foods allows you to buy primarily meat, but sometimes they also offer produce um, in bulk. So they give you a really good discount and they come around for these 
events. So they're not really sold. They don't sell their products in a store. They sell them via these events. So they kind of cut out the middleman. But what it means is that you get really good prices. For instance, they just had um, a fall chicken event where you could buy boneless, skinless chicken breasts for $1.69 a pound when you buy 40 pounds. Now that works out to be about $67 a box, but you could go in on a, with a friend, or if you're able to make that initial investment, then you freeze it and then you save and you have enough chicken to last you till hopefully the next event. Um, so looking at options like that are a great um, idea. Another store, Summit Trading, which is really local to where I live. It's all, there's also one in Tequila. They offer really crazy discounts on meat and produce. So like every week they have a produce sale and they have a meat sale. Last week I think they had like butternut squash for 10 cents a pound. They've had, um, oh gosh, they've had apples for like 20 cents a pound, all sorts of crazy things. Um, and I know that some of these places are local, but I want to tell you, look at those local places. Don't write them off just because you're like, they're not some big grocery store. Check them out. Check out your farms. Check out your farmer's markets. Check out the local produce stands. Build relationships with these people. My mom has a great relationship with one of the local produce stands out near her, and she she's always able to have them hold aside bananas or maybe the produce that's not as quality because my mom will throw it in her smoothies and so she has a good relationship with them and she's able to get a discount so don't don't rule out those avenues to saving explore new stores and new places where you might um, find your grocery food and again adjust your menu so again maybe it's it's about adjusting you're gonna have to adjust some way or other but figure out what makes sense for your family whether it's adjusting your menu just adjusting your expectations or adjusting your budget find out how how you need to make that adjustment um, to to adapt um, and still keep this saving money project for your family fun and doable. The last challenge I want to talk about is more of a, I guess what I'd call like a softer one. It's not one of these maybe hard and fast problems a lot of people have, but it's something I'm hearing about more and more. So I just want to address it, and that's um, the challenge of being. Um, scrutinize more closely nowadays when you say you're a couponer. This may mean that you don't feel like taking your coupon binder out in public anymore because you're concerned of the looks you might get. Or maybe people have made comments to you. Maybe your friends have made more comments to you um, thinking that you're crazy for doing what you're doing and you never used to get that before. And sometimes it's cashiers. Um, at checkout and they're scrutinizing your coupons and it makes you feel like you're doing something wrong. Um, so I just want to encourage you tonight, if you're if you're experiencing that, you're not alone. Um, I think anyone of us that's been doing this for a while and especially doing this now is, is feeling that um, a bit. So here's what I would say um, to you, first besides be encouraged and um, keep at it, right? Um, the first thing is keep abreast of coupon policy. So know exactly what, what those rules are so you can know and have that confidence at checkout that you are playing by the rules, that you are not cheating the store, um, that, that you um, are using your coupons correctly. Keep organized, especially at checkout. This can help some of that discomfort greatly. Um, what I always do before I check out is um, I pull my cart, like usually down an aisle, it's not too busy, go back through everything in my cart super quick, go through my coupons, make sure like if I had a coupon out for something that ended, didn't end up picking out, make sure to put it back, um, putting everything in the right, correct order so when I get to check out, I have my, my stack ready to go, I have my items ready to go. That doesn't necessarily mean that you'll be less scrutinized, but I think it does help knowing that you've done everything on your part to help the transaction go through quickly um, and if you are doing things correctly stay confident and stay friendly i always find it helps just to make quick eye contact with the, the cashier and thank them for their time um, I try not to apologize oh i'm sorry i have all these coupons say oh thank you i thank you in advance for helping me with these coupons today or you know i just have a heads up i have these coupons i really appreciate your help with them um don't feel like you have to apologize you're not doing anything wrong but there is something about having a grateful heart and acknowledging um the cashiers that are helping you out um also know that 
some of that scrutiny may become um, as a result that there there is more coupon fraud. Let's just be honest. And um, stores have been hurt in really big, bad ways from coupon misuse. And some people have been fired for coupon fraud. So some of what you're feeling may be the fear that a cashier has. Um, to make sure they're doing their job correctly so they don't lose their job or get in trouble. So I always think when I'm being scrutinized, the worst that can happen to me is maybe they won't take one of my coupons or a couple of my coupons. So the worst I have to lose is a couple bucks, in which case I can just take the item off the transaction. But what about that cashier? What's the worst they have to lose? Well, that's their job. If they don't do their job correctly, they stand to lose a lot more in this transaction than I do. So when I, when I think of that with that sort of proper um, mindset, um, I guess I'm more sympathetic to what they're doing. And if you know that you've done everything correctly, just bite your tongue a little bit and, and be gracious and understanding. Um, let them look. If they need to go back through and make sure that you bought the correct item, let them go through um, for their job security and their peace of mind. If you've done everything correctly, you should be concerned. Um, so I guess that's what I would just I would just say to that. So um, so just just stay friendly and stay confident. Um, but the final thing I want to say is if you're feeling um, that you've been scrutinized or um, be or you're getting those looks or you're getting comments from your friends or family wondering what you're doing or thinking you're kind of crazy, I just want to encourage you and I just want to end this webcast on a positive note. And I want to remind you why you're doing this in the first place. You're doing this to help your family save money. Maybe so you can get out of debt. Maybe so you can go on a vacation. Maybe so you can enroll your child in private school. Maybe so one of the parents can be a stay-at-home parent for your kids. Remember that a look or a comment is temporary. Don't let it derail you from the goals that matter most to your family. I hope you won't give up what you're doing for something for just feeling silly or uncomfortable please don't please don't give up take if you need to hang on to your receipts um tally up the amount of money you're saving or use the free excel tracker savings tracker i have on my site and remind yourself of why you're doing this in the first place um, that's all I have for you tonight. If you have questions, I'm not seeing anybody in, in the chat box, but I am in a, um, after I close this um, broadcast, I'm going to just leave the chat up for a few more minutes. So if you have questions, feel free to pop up and I'll just answer them um, by text. Uh, if you have a question or um, response that maybe you don't feel comfortable having go up on the chat, I, I respect that too. Know that you can always email me. My email address is Angela, A-N-G-E-L-A, at thecouponproject.com. And I do my very, very best to read and respond personally to each of the emails that I receive. Um, know that there's also um, a great community on Facebook, uh, facebook.com slash the coupon project. Uh, feel free to leave your questions and comments right there on my wall or underneath any of the updates. Um, I'm sure you're not the only one. If you're experiencing a frustration or a challenge, I'm, I've got to almost guarantee you're not the only one um, that's going through what it is that you're experiencing. So I hope that tonight has been positive, even though we've been talking about some real challenges we've been experiencing. I, I hope that you've gotten something positive and encouraging um, out of tonight, that you've gotten some ideas for how you can continue to press on and go forward um, saving your family money. Thank you so much for joining me. I will have this recorded webcast up on my blog and uploaded to my YouTube channel, um, which is uh, Coupon Project at YouTube, um, probably tomorrow, um, just as soon as I can. Thank you so much for tuning in and have a great night.